Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, it's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege for me to introduce uh, Pastor Bud Womack. But before I get started, uh, he's accompanied today by his beautiful wife, Miss Faye, and one of his two daughters, his lovely daughter, Kelsey, and she's an educator, or will be an educator. So if you two will stand up, we'd like to welcome you to Georgia's People's House. I met uh, Reverend Bud several years ago. We did a, a road dedication for a fallen hero in my part of the country, uh, Victor Anderson, and we named uh, a section of uh, Highway 19 between Americus and Ellaville uh, in his memory. And uh, Victor served uh, not only courageously with the United States Army, but he also served in both Sheriff's Department, the Sheriff's Department in Sly County and in Sumter County. And uh, I got to meet Bud and, and we talked and instantly we became friends. Um, he serves as the chaplain, not only for the Sumter County Sheriff's Department, but also for the State Patrol. And he has to deal with some of the um, emotional issues and spiritual issues that um, our fine men and women in law enforcement are faced with on a daily basis. And I guess that's what um, prepared him for me. Anyway, uh, we became great friends and uh, have, uh, I had him here last year. And not only is he a man of God, but he's also a man of the people. Uh, last night we had dinner together, and for an hour and a half, nonstop, we kept talking and talking and talking and catching up and enjoying it. And uh, I know you'll be inspired by today's message. So let me introduce you to my very close friend, Reverend Bud Womack. I just want to point out that we did spend an hour and a half at the restaurant, but Mike done most of the talking. <laughs> I know you may have a hard time believing that. We knew that. <laughs> uh, I do want to thank you, uh, Mike, for inviting me back again. I hope that last time I was here, almost a year ago today, I uh, talked to you about living in a blessed field, and I hope in the past 12 months you found yourself living in a blessed field. I want to thank you, Speaker Ralston, for letting me be here, and also all of you for what you do in the state of Georgia and how you conduct business and make a change in who we are and as a state. I want to start out by telling you a joke about a preacher. A young preacher first started out preaching. He got his first revival, 250 people in attendance. A little old lady walked up to him after church and said, Son, you just something else. He smiled real big, shook her hand, hugged her neck, walked away. The next night he came back, there was only 150 people there. Same little old lady walked up to him, smiled at him real big and said, son, you something else. The next night, 50 people showed up for the revival and the young preacher was so depressed and let down. Done the best he could preaching. After church, same little old lady walked up to him and she said, son, you just something else. He said, wait a minute, ma'am. You've told me that for three nights. We've dropped 100 people in attendance every night since then. Why do you keep saying that? She said, because you ain't a preacher, you something else. You need to figure it out. <laughs> I don't know if that fits me or not, but whatever it does, it does. I want to talk to you on this thought this morning just briefly, that the backside may be the best side. Romans 8 and 37 says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I want to tell you about a man that I know. He was raised in a poor home that at best they barely got by. On the rare occasion that the family was allowed to go out and possibly treat themselves to a burger, they were allowed, he and his siblings, to order a hamburger, but the family literally could not afford cheese. He knew what it was to have hand-me-downs. Uh, if you look around now, we pay good money for tore-up pants. Uh, we didn't do that when I was growing up. That would have been a large embarrassment. So, But this guy knew what hand-me-downs were. 
School, the other kids would get extra things. They could buy an extra milk, possibly even ice cream on ice cream day. But this young man was often left out of that equation, laughed at because of his clothes, looked down on because of where he came from. At the age of 16, he moved to a new town. His family moved away and he started high school in that other town. A new beginning, but with the same clouded mind and wounded heart. Nothing seemed to work in his favor, so he chose the wrong path. He began to experiment with drugs. He discovered the numbing effects of alcohol. He and his dad couldn't get along, and so a quick stop by the local liquor store and a little drink to have the numbing effect so he could deal with the inevitable fighting and arguing that would ensue as soon as he got home with his dad. One day, he was invited to go to church. He was told about Jesus, and he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior, and boy, it changed his life. He felt so much better. It's the first time he'd ever felt totally and 100% accepted. He graduated high school, met a young girl. A man, he fell head over heels in love with her. After dating for nearly three years, they got married. About six years later, when they found out their first child was going to be born, all hell broke loose in his life. Everything he touched broke down. He, he just couldn't get anything right. Whatever he touched seemed to fall apart. Everywhere he turned, there was another attack, somebody else saying something or doing something to bring him down. He found himself with the same feelings he had when he was a kid, just not good enough, rejected, looked down on, and also talked about. One day, church for him really happened. There was an empty seat in front of him. When he sat down, he thought, well, I'll just drudge through another chance of going to church. It probably isn't going to work. Set right down in front of him was this man about six foot eight, probably 350 pounds. He sat there disgusted and aggravated, and reluctantly, he stayed in church that day. He couldn't tell you what the preacher said. He couldn't tell you what songs were sung. With some 800 people in attendance that day, he got up from his seat and decided when the altar call was given, he'd give it one more shot because he even felt rejected by God. He went down to the altar, nearly 100 people in that altar, and he knelt down, and this was what he prayed. God, if you still love me, let somebody come by and pray for me. I just need a touch. Nobody out of 100 people in that altar even walked by and bumped his foot as he knelt. Still feeling rejected and let down, he got up to go back to his seat. Just before he got back to his seat, that big old tall, wide man that blocked his total view during church stepped out in the aisle, held his arms out, and said, Come here, son. That young man fell into the chest of that big old guy and just wept. This is what he said to him. He said, Son, the arms you feel right now are not the arms of a man but they're the arms of your heavenly Father, and he wants you to know he still loves you. My friend, that changed his life forever. Now, you may ask, how do you know so much about this young man? It's simple. That young man was me. I lived that life. And here's what I want you to hear today. Just because somebody else has made up in their mind that you're nothing, it doesn't mean God has made up his mind. He loves you unconditionally, takes you just like you are, and promises never to leave you that way. Isaiah 54 and 17 says this, No weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Now I want you to notice, it doesn't say that there won't be a weapon formed. It doesn't say that there won't be difficult times. It doesn't say we won't face hardships. It just says that they won't prosper. And I think that's good news. I want to close with this thought. I always thought I couldn't. I always thought I never would or never could until I found out I could as long as I've got him and I'm remembering that he loves me.
Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So the backside, what we see as the backside, very well may be the best side. It's determined by what we choose to do with our life. Will you pray with me? Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I want to take a personal moment just to thank you for reminding me that you love me. Thank you, Lord, for every step that I took in life. God, today there are representatives from all over the state of Georgia, leadership of this state. They need to be reminded that you love them. God, that you can guide their hands, you can guide their voice. God, every time they vote on legislation, I pray, God, that you would deliver it into their hearts that you love them. I pray, Lord, for strength in their lives, blessings on their homes, enjoyment in their job as a representative. I ask you, God, to walk with them. Bless this chamber and its leadership. We ask you, God, to bless the state of Georgia. And, God, we ask you to continue to bless the United States of America. It's in the lovely and precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.